Hey guys, I'm here. We are back for Invincible Episode 5. The last episode moved the plot forward in a couple of different ways, mostly regarding Damien Darkblood uh, with his investigation and a little clue that he left behind for, um, you know, for anybody to find, given what happens to him at the end of the episode. Um, which I don't know if he planned for or not. I don't know why he left that there. If he did, he know he was going to get banished or exercised back to hell. It's a good question that I've got there. We got a little trip with Mark up to uh, Mars, in which it looks like we got a little case of Martian infection with some little squid brains that are on their way back to Earth. Uh, also with somebody who seems to be posing. Maybe another Martian or something like that that is posing as one of the astronauts that left back on the ship as well. Um, of course, a little couple more hints to Nolan's actual intentions and plans. Uh, but overall, solid episode. I think the animation kind of took a little bit of a dip in a lot of ways. I think they're saving up for some of the more core episodes or they just put their best foot forward. Overall, there's some spots where the animation was still as we expected it from the first three episodes, but there was a couple of scenes here and there where it definitely looks like they were cutting a couple of corners. But again, I still found it enjoyable. I found the characters endearing. Uh, I liked Mark's little uh, relationship that he's got going on and how he kind of made his little excuses for how his two, uh, for his two week trip up into space before he came back. Um, it was a lot of fun. A uh, nice little, semi wholesome episode for what it was but yeah guys i'm excited to dive into the next episode I'm, I'm really glad we decided to go along for this series so that being said remember the full unedited reaction is available over on patreon or if you become a member here on the channel either way it gets access to this as well as all the other shows we're covering here on the channel as well uh but yeah let's go ahead and dive into the latest episode episode five that actually hurt is the title here we go Oh, wait, is this the rock guy? Yep. <laughs> that guy is fucking lucky. Oh, that guy, not so much. <laughs> the hell you think was going to happen there? <laughs> There's a guy just kill that guy with another guy. Tell Mr. Lou next time I find him on our turf, I won't be so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, well, wait. That message was for you. Lol. I was like, I can't tell anybody shit. Across town to get cheesecake. Yep. To make up for being late because you went across town to get <laughs> cheesecake. Is that crazy? Yeah, it kind of is. I could take it back, but that'll probably just make me even more late. <laughs> <laughs> late twelve times in the past mm. three months. I'm sorry, but I'm docking your ship. Don't bother. I quit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Struggling to balance everything. That's ah, gonna. Is that gonna be the focus of this episode? Now what? Mark, you have to scare him. Make him think you'll actually drop him. I can hear you! Mm -hmm. I don't know, that, that seems mean. <laughs> Alright, here, I'll show you. <laughs> there, see? Uh, now he'll tell me everything. <laughs> You're gonna catch him, right? In a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. Two lives worth minimum wage. Or do you want to fire your guns in the air so you tried your best and we all walk away happy? Uh, I like option two. Alive, please. <laughs> Wouldn't like the police wonder why they just shot the ceiling only, though. Hey, can't make it tonight. Just got hit by something. <laughs> Seriously? What the not even fuck? scratched? Not bad for a guy with gravel for fingers. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm done. Mm, nah. <laughs> nah. 
See, Titan, your problem is you're too useful to make an impact. If you didn't just He's got like a, an auto-tune kind of feeling to his voice. Time. I don't need your money anymore. Sure you do. You think you can just punch your way out of this? I know where your family lives, and that means you work for me until <laughs> I say you're fucking done. I'm watching the elephant rob a store downtown. He'd be perfect practice for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really in the mood. Mark. <laughs> okay, I'm coming. Superhero. Yeah. <laughs> That's what people say. Are you a good guy? I know. What's his name? Him? He calls himself. More blood. This whole thing just going to be covered in blood by the end of this. Drenched in it. The. Oh, I guess the. The book gives off that aura too. Oh yeah. only means that we liked Rex very much and we felt good that he was keeping you safe. Uh, part of a team. Rex cheated on me. Teen team broke up. I was like, I'm pretty sure she was protected his ass half the time. What? All guys make mistakes. Don't be a... <laughs> what? I can do anything I want on my own. Literally. I can rearrange atoms on a molecular level like it's easy. And two, I'm not even sure I want to do this anymore. Oh, Samantha. Don't you leave that door there. Nah. <laughs> oh god damn man fucking weird ass parents invincible with missing letters all of the vowels are gone i called you here because i need your help why would i help you so aren't you a hero helping people and taking down bad guys yeah so help me take down <laughs> my boss machine head That's machine head of course you haven't heard of him. You're a rich kid from the suburbs. Uh, why don't you give uh, Fight Force a call? Mm. Sure, man. Just fly away. Forget about everyone else down here. Let me show you what you don't see from up there. It's some bullshit. <laughs> it's not hard for me either, man. Right, this is beneath you. Mom? Mm. I know that sometimes people aren't who they appear Superman to be. saves exactly. the cats from trees do when he doesn't have anything else to do. Guy, you're going to learn a very painful lesson. But I also know that helping someone is never beneath you. Fuck this. Mm, fuck Rex, man. Good debrief, everyone. As usual, I'll be the only person who actually sacrificed something since I'm now a week younger than I was yesterday. Mm. Can you believe these punks? Some of them. Yeah. Mark volunteered to help me at the Beckwell Community Center downtown. We do dinners twice a week for anyone who's hungry. I'm impressed. Do not be. He owes me. <laughs> Beckwell's like my second home. Oh, man. Gotta run. I told my mom I'd help with an open house. I'll see you there. Bye, Eve. You want to come tonight? <laughs> we could use the help. But we have to make it quick. I've got plans later tonight. <laughs> Oh, back to these guys. Welcome to the world of the living, clone. <laughs> Don't start. I'm the original. So the process was a success. I'll never understand oh. why you do that. I'm not here to fight. Not the replication chamber, idiot! Mm. As I was trying to say, I need your expertise in tissue growth. I'll make it worth your while. What you up to, robot? If you have a sec, could you pick up a few things for dinner? Well, I was thinking some tagliatelle from that restaurant in Rome, and... Oh, wow. She's smart.
I don't know if you got time to be crawling in a vent. This stressed me out. I also knew exactly when you and this giant pile of shit would walk in here and ruin my doors. Also, Italian maple, by the way. <laughs> no way you saw this car. This is what happens when your head's a fucking rock. This little upgrade shows me all kinds of possibilities, which is how I know it's not worth explaining to you two morons what quantum probabilities are. Oh, shit. I don't know who these guys are, but... Probably a, a tough crowd. Dude, Thundercat here looks awesome. Oh, Jesus. The fuck is that guy's deal? He's got tentacle chest, rubber band man. What are you? Oh. Oh, yeah, I mean, he'd be dying right now, man. You guys are fucking dead! Who's next? Hello, boy. What the fuck just happened? The Viltrumite DNA just like explode. Oh my God, dude. Oh. Oh. Cecil got an anonymous call. We'll take it from you. Dude, seriously, I, I, I'm most interested about what the fuck that guy is with his bubblegum wrap chest. <sighs> Jesus. It always gets his, like, catches me whenever one of her clones dies. It takes me a second to realize. Jesus, robots going hard. Well, uh, backup didn't really help much. Oh! This whole time, too, Nolan was just watching. Fuck, man. I'm here. I'll fix you. Oh, is that what he's trying to do? Like, is that what he's working on with the cloning guys in this little project? A way to fix her? But whatever you told that kid to get him on your side, it fucking I told him the truth. I'm gonna make this city better for a lot of people. But some people come first. Wow. He just Luke Cage this shit. We'll keep trying. I, I got a feeling blood's still the answer. Hmm. Damn. Okay. Interesting. All right, guys, another banger episode. I don't know why that's become like my word of choice here lately. Um, I really like this one, man. I like Titan and his whole little like story. It is a cut. Ugh, sorry, arc in this, um, like his world and bringing Mark into it because I think it helps give him a more down to earth kind of perception that might help ground him later compared to how Nolan sees everything. I think that's a good way to balance the priorities that he's trying to teach Mark and lean it towards what his mother would prefer. 
And I like the story with his mother and how that's still continuing to progress. She found this uh, document. She found this notebook that Dark Blood left behind. And, you know, she's plotting her own little investigations, her like mapping how long it takes her husband to get to certain locations where she's like, ah, I need some, can you get some groceries from these places for dinner tonight or whatever? Mapping out how long it would take him to get to and from all those different places in the back home so that she can do her own little investigation around the house while he's gone. She finds his suit covered in blood and why it was hidden away. And then of course he's watching Mark do this stuff while he disagrees with it, but he also didn't intervene whatsoever, which is curious to me. Maybe he thinks if Mark does die, he can stop what he's doing. I don't know. I'm still confused on what the trigger for why he decided to act recently was. It coincided with Mark getting his powers. When Mark just like he knew Mark got his powers, that was when he attacked the guardians. So if Mark's out of the picture, would he go back to being in hiding? Would he not be fulfilling his conquest that I believe is what his goal is? Because again, I'm not read the comic, so I'm not sure what's going on. But there's been a lot of hints that he's here in a like malicious manner. But this family has been kind of keeping him at bay, I guess. Because this is the timing with everything. And like a lot of the words he uses, like especially uh, in the one where he was in Rome or whatever, and he was talking about Julius Caesar and being a conqueror and a bunch of different stuff and his responsibility as a Viltrumite or whatever. And um, just this bigger picture ideal that he's got, trying to keep uh, instilling this idea in the market that he's better than everybody and he shouldn't be worrying about everybody and all this stuff. And, uh, I like the team dynamic. I like the relationship with Amber and Eve and seeing a little bit of her home life, which was just yucky. And I definitely understand her leaving that. And then one be like, no, you need to be with Rex despite everything that you did. You know, fuck off. Um, and Monster Girl, man, just her power is just so sad. Like if she had, anytime she uses, she gets younger and she like aged, what? She lost two weeks of her life in this episode, give or take. Um, but yeah, I didn't expect that turnaround in the end with that guy being able to use that upgrade he got in the beginning to quantum compute, kind of like Barry did in a recent episode of The Flash, where he got super smart as he was able to see all kinds of outcomes and predictions. And this was one of the outcomes he foresaw with his computing ability, and he planned for it accordingly and got these titans of villains to come in here. That cat dude almost killed everybody man holy shit um and it, they'd probably all be dead if he didn't get bored and leave and in that whole time like with mark's life hanging in the balance there nolan didn't give two shits he was he was just looking in that moment he's like dad he was watching the whole thing go on and then he was there when mark opened his eyes and then he faded for a second, opened them again, his dad was gone, and just went back home. What is his end game here, man? What is what does he care? Does he care about anything? Anyone? What is this? Is this like, oh, told you so? Is this what is this gonna come back to? And then I told you so moment. Did he know his son was going to live? And he was just like, well, fuck it. This is gonna be a hard lesson for him to learn. What is it? God damn. Um but yeah, Robot seems to be using those uh, cloning guys to, for some project he's working on. We saw him working on that thing he's trying to grow uh, back at their base. Still not sure what that is, but he's said these couple things to Monster Girl about, like, he seems to be connecting with her and her trauma. He's like, I believe her out of everything that everybody else is saying. I was like, can you believe a word they said or whatever uh, Samson was saying? He's like, I believe some of them. And he looked at her. As she was walking away. And then he's in this moment when she almost died was when he freaked out. And then holding her cradling her at the end, he's like, I'll, I'll fix you. Is he doing this to try to optimize his team? Or is it out of a sense of care or both? I'm curious what this is going on, but I think it has something to do with him trying to 
um, find a way or use their technology to maybe clone her a new body that won't de-age or allow her to do what they do and instill her consciousness in a new body each time to keep her from dying due to her powers. That's, that's my prediction on that. But overall, I don't have anything else to add to this episode. This one was a lot. This episode was intense. I, don't, I also don't know where the relationship's going to go with Amber and how long that's going to take before. Will he can like confess the truth as to why he's missing everything? She kind of seemed like she was already aware that e about what Eve did. So I'm not too sure about that one. So I, uh, I don't know. I think it, I think Amber, depending on how this whole thing goes, is worth the effort. She's definitely like a hero in her own right without having any powers. Um, I think she would deserve to know. So we'll see. That's my opinion. It's always like a gray area with superhero stuff, whether you should tell the people close to you or not. Uh, but yeah, let me pass this off to you guys. What do you guys think of this episode? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We can carry on the conversation after the video. As always, remember the full unedited reactions available on Patreon or for becoming a member here on the channel. And huge shout outs to our patron legends, Mandy Sherratt, uh, Antoine Rodriguez, and Ryan Karen. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you everybody for tuning in for this latest entry in this fantastic show. And to everybody that recommended that I keep going with it. I think I'll keep saying that because I wasn't too sure in the beginning if we were going to make this into another series here on the channel, but here we are. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll catch you guys in the next episode of Invincible. Take care, everybody.